Well, hi there, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And in today's video, it's gonna be another van update because a few things have changed actually, as the title will suggest. We have actually got a kitchen in the van, which is really, really exciting. So I'm gonna show you that and then talk about the next steps that we've got to overcome uh, to make sure that the, the kitchen actually works as a kitchen. So let's take a look. So those of you who have been following the van build all the way from the start will know that we bought our kitchen from Evo Motion Design. We picked it up when we went to Swanage, we went to uh, the railway there, camped at a campsite right next to the railway, had a fantastic time despite the weather, but we picked up the kitchen on the way back and uh, yeah, it sat in the garage for a little while whilst we waited for the weather to improve so I could actually build it. Those of you who don't know, Evo Motion kitchens come flat packed. They're all sort of CNC'd cut um, kitchens. So they're all, you know, they all fit together really, really well, but they do come flat pack. You basically pick what design you want from their, um, from their website. And uh, yeah, whatever fits your van, but you can spec, but you can pick um, kitchens that are designed specifically for different types of vans. So you can pick ones for crafters slash Mercedes Sprinters, sort of pre-2017, so before this shape, when the Sprinter and the Crafter were built together on the same production facility. Um, but then after that, they parted ways and the Crafter is now a separate vehicle to the Sprinter. And you can pick ones uh, sort of post-2017 you can pick kitchens that fit crafters of that that era. You can also pick ones that fit Ducatos, um, Wells Transits, all sorts. They've got loads of different ones. And basically what happens is it is um, scribed to fit the particular van that you've chosen. Once you've decided what van you've got, you then pick what colour wood that you want it to be in, what worktop you want, what sink you want, what hob you want, all sorts. You know, there's all sorts of different things that you can pick and uh, you spec your kitchen and th they build it and tell you when it's ready. So it's it's really cool actually, and there's loads to choose from. I'll put a link in the description below to the website. This is not a sponsored video, but you can have a good browse through and decide whether those kitchens are right for you. But I know you all wanna see the kitchen that we have installed. So let's take a look. So I'm in the process of building the kitchen. <laughs> it's quite hard work actually. The instructions are, Pretty terrible, unfortunately. They look like they've been photocopied about 58 times. So, you know, you're not sure whether you're actually seeing the whole lot or not, but um, yeah, and I think they're pretty generic instructions. So like our bit doesn't have that oval cutout uh, and things like that. So I'm trying to work it out and I can't say I'm doing it exactly how it says on here because the holes are in different places compared to this instructions. So, uh, but basically what it is, you've got these funny things that you sort of hammer in and then you use a big Allen key through that to attach onto the next piece. Um, yeah, and then you also use a lot of these. So you've got like, you have to put these dowels inside some of the holes, like you can see I've done there. And they're not the easiest to get in. You do have to hammer them in to get them flush or nearly flush. And then you use the screws, little three and a half inch screws, I think they are, um, just to attach bits together. But yeah, you're not always entirely sure where, whether the holes are in the right place or not. So you can't just go ahead and hammer loads of dowels in straight away. You need to make sure you line everything up first. But then obviously sometimes you're hammering dowels in where the board isn't flat on the ground. So makes it a little bit tricky, but can't complain. The weather's all right, isn't it? If anything, it's too hot now. Can't wink, can you? It's either too cold or too hot. But I'm gonna keep doing a bit more of this. We're really excited to be bringing you a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Getting away in a camper van can really help with the stresses that life can throw at you, but we can't always be away. And sometimes we just need a bit of help getting our mental health back on track. 
Therapy is a great way of ensuring that you are given the right tools to approach your mental health in the best way possible. We're excited to tell you about how BetterHelp makes finding the right therapist for you super easy. It's all online, you just answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you to a credentialed therapist within a few days and often much less than that. It's really easy to get signed up to this service, just click the link in our description and on the screen now. Clicking the link also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. I've been using the service for a few months now and I find that having a therapist to unload all my problems onto really can help clear my head. We discuss coping techniques for anxiety and stress and she comes up with some fun little tasks to help me just feel more like me again and not just mum Lizzie. What's great is I can use the phone or chat service so it's really convenient to fit around my life. I really hope this partnership with BetterHelp can help our viewers and subscribers if they are struggling with their mental health. Once again, the link is in the description below and on the screen for 10% off your first month. Thank you again to BetterHelp for working with us. So I've actually stood it up now. You've got to stand it up on an edge because this bit here is going to be where the step is in the van. So it's not a completely flat floor uh, on site on this unit, if that makes sense. It, it will step down on the step in the van. So you've got to stand it up against something, which is OK. This is actually where the fridge will be in this big portion here. And then eventually the worktop will be on top. This is the back. This is the front of the unit. So uh, yeah, a lot more building yet to do. Well, I finally got the outer carcass complete. Obviously there'll be a drawer there, a drawer there, a drawer there, and then one at the bottom, and then a big cupboard down there as well. The fridge goes in the end there, so you can access it when the sliding doors open, and also when the sliding doors shut. It's already got the cutout, that's where the hob will go, and that's where the sink will go. I don't know whether we will, we'll probably treat this, I would have thought, with something. Obviously it's one of those jobs that would have been a lot easier to probably treat it before it was built, but um, the weather's nice, I need to get it built and put in the van before night falls really because I've got no room in the garage to put it so that's the next job I'm gonna try and get it put inside and that's where Lizzie's gonna help me because it's a bit heavy I'm not exactly at the moment in the best position to help because I'm just on the bed watching Sean work however hopefully these two will be okay here yes are you gonna be okay being looked after by your big brother um yeah we'll try and lift it in now in order to keep it nice and suspenseful is that word? I'm not sure. I'm going to show you the kitchen from the outside. And this is it. Ta da! <laughs> so, as you can see, it overlaps the sliding door by quite a way. We, we knew we were always going to have it like that. This is finished in pastel verde, pastel green, essentially. Um, really, really nice colour. And it's, yeah, it's just like a. It's like a greeny grey colour, but it's really, really nice. It is, it, it really sort of lifts the interior and also complements the exterior as well. So yeah, it overlaps. You can see we've gone for the bamboo wood finish. This does need treating. You can see every time you get a little bit of damp on there, it is sort of staining. That is very recent, so it won't always stay like that. I think whenever you open the sliding door, if it's been raining, it drips down onto there so we do need to treat this with something not sure what yet this i think is the evo uh, v7 i think it's either the v7 or v8 i'll double check in the, and uh, write it on the screen right now um but it's specifically designed for the crafter as well and what that means is where it's basically cut to fit the contour of the side of the van now you've got a bit of flexibility as to where you put this. You can move it a bit further this way if you want and a bit further that way if you want, but you can see it is obviously cut out for this portion of the van. So there's only so much movement you can do. Also, at the bottom, you have a step. Uh, this is all, I've not modified this at all. So this comes out and then comes down and is designed to sit right on the floor. As you can see, it doesn't sit right on the uh, step in our van, and that's because we've built up the floor more than they expect you to build up the floor. I'm not sure exactly what it's, what floor it's designed for. I think they say in the description, it's about a 20 mil 
floor. Um, so I think if we didn't have, if this is the factory floor, this bit here, this ply, I think if we'd remove that and not put that in, still built up the floor, because I think, I seem to remember this was about 20 mil, I can't really remember now, but I think if it didn't have this bit, it would pretty much sit on the floor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build something to just sort of um, support it slightly, that will still look good, but I don't really want it to be completely covered underneath, just because there is actually, this, this is where the fridge goes. We've not bought the fridge yet. Um, it's designed specifically for a Fetford T2090 fridge, which is a 90 litre fridge, compressor fridge, and that will slot in perfectly in there. But they're about uh, 800 pounds, so <laughs> we will wait a bit before we, we buy that. Um, yeah, so not cheap especially once you've just bought the kitchen again, which is not cheap. But yeah, that is designed to slot right in there. Um, but also the reason why I don't want it to be completely covered is because there is a vent in there. Now I know, let me just move these leaners bibs. Now I know if this was sat right on the floor, obviously it would be enclosed. So where does that um, hot air from the fridge vent out to? But I, I think, even if it was sat right on the on the step here, because of these like perforations in the step, it's never gonna sit completely flat. So there would be some air circulation there. So I'm not I'm not too worried. I'm I've I've not fully worked out what I'm gonna do there. Basically I am gonna put some support in. The majority of the kitchen is on the flat floor over there and also at the back there. It's only this portion here that um, extends out and has no support at the minute. It can't really tip this way because it's bolted with L brackets to the wall there. And um, I think when the fridge is in, that will also spread the load along the bottom. But I am gonna do something. What I might do is I might do, because obviously I need to do a finishing strip round here and I might actually just continue the finishing strip. And however I screw or bond that to the side of the kitchen, that might just be enough just to give a bit of support, but I'm gonna look at that at a later date. Like I say, designed for a Fetford T2090 fridge, and that will then have a side opening door. It's not one of those fancy ones that open both ways. It will only open like that, so it won't give you easy access from outside, but yeah, th those ones that open both ways are unbelievably expensive. So um, yeah, I'm not that bothered about having having easy access to get beers from, <laughs> from outside. I can save my money, go in and get my beers, thank you. Now above the fridge, there is a Fetford gas hob. Really, really like the look of this. There's a few options you can go for. Basically, when, when you spec your kitchen from Evo Motion, it's designed with just a uh, worktop and then you choose what um, sink you want and what hob you want. You can choose to go uh, electric, induction. Um, you can have a smaller sink if you want. You can, there's, yeah, there's a few options. It In this particular kitchen, it's specifically designed to have the hob here. If you had the sink here, it would um, foul on the fridge, so you can't do that. But there are different ones. If you want a sink this side and a hob that side, there are different kitchens you can go for. So there's plenty of options available. The hob is bolted down. It's, it's just fixed down under there, but it is not plumbed in yet. I've not actually connected it. So um, yeah, that's another job, obviously. Uh, but basically the, the gas pipes will just run off down the back there behind the sink and out to wherever I choose to put the gas locker. The sink, we went for a an undermounted sink and it's quite nice actually. So you, you, again, you can choose to have, uh, to keep the cut out and they will finish it nicely, put a little um, hole so you can get the cut out, out easily. So it's like a chopping board or extra worktop space. You just lift that out and I have put the sink in. So the sink, it was a bit harder than I expected. What I should have done is I should have put the sink in before I put the worktop on. That was a bit of a mistake of mine. But I have, what I've done is I've bonded it 
um, with some adhesive and then also in each corner I've put a screw it obviously has to be a very short screw because this isn't very thick worktop um, up and into the the worktop just to make sure it's nice and secure you do get a little drain plug but I've not put that in yet because I've not decided um, what size drain piping I want to use and I also need to run a bit of clear silicon all around here just to make sure it is completely sealed just in case water overflows I do not want water getting in there I love the fact that once you put that on you actually have a really nice size worktop to work on that's really cool I have um, finished, so it, this was actually quite a big gap when I first put it in. Uh, so I basically pat, uh, padded that out with extra insulation and then I've obviously carpeted. It doesn't look very neat here because that is gonna be completely covered um, once I actually bought the rest of this. Oh, these cables will not be here either. These are just the light switches from the van. One of the light switches. So they'll be, I'm actually gonna try and mount them. I'd really like those to be maybe somewhere on the side of the kitchen here or something, but not sure yet. And I also need to work out what I'm gonna do here to finish all this off. I think I'll have some sockets here so that you can plug a kettle in or a, uh, a little air fryer or something. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but it'd be nice to have some sockets here so you can use any kitchen appliances and maybe that wouldn't be a bad place there to have the light switch. But yeah, it needs to all be built up around here. So that I'm sure will be good fun. But the kitchen itself has so much storage. It's fantastic. I was a little bit worried that once you've got the uh, fridge in there, I was a little bit worried that all, because all of that is just uh, taken up by the fridge. I was a bit worried that you'd have a big unit with not much storage, but it really does have tons of storage because these drawers are huge. They're all soft clothes. All these catches come with it. You pick whether you want silver catches or you can have these this bit in the middle in black, um, but we just went for the silver ones. And then, <laughs> I mean, you can see all the junk that's in here. Oh, that's where the iPad is. We haven't just spent ages trying to find that, honest. But it, it's so good having all our stuff in here all the time now we obviously need to get a proper cutlery drawer um, like a separator so that all the knives and forks and everything are all nice and separated uh, this separator here comes with it so that's quite nice and then as you can see soft close almost um, and then the drawer underneath is actually a little bit bigger it's a little bit deeper so that's got plates um, bowls cups and all sorts in everything was basically chucked in for we, we used this the first time we used this was when we went to the revival and it made such a difference uh down here we've got a cupboard which yeah it's just got some uh stuff in there at the minute nothing of that's that's that exciting you've got another drawer in here which again is really deep it's got ridge monkey uh, pans yeah all sorts and then right at the bottom another big drawer which has just got the little travel kettle in like i say it's so much storage and it's actually meant that it's made it even easier for us to use this uh, whilst we're in the build process before we had this kitchen put in we'd used the van a couple of times but we had like a folding unit that we would just put up and we just chuck all our food and plates and things like that in when, when we arrived on site, which is all fine. You know, there's no issue with that at all, but it did mean that we had to fully pack it all down if we wanted to go anywhere. At least with this, everything is stored in there. It's, um, it's not very neat at the minute. We'll tidy it all up and put stuff exactly where we want it. Uh, and then if we want to go anywhere, you just make sure all the drawers are shut and you can travel away. It's really cool. I'll absolutely love that. And also it means that we've got a worktop that we can actually use, at, which is at a really good height. And it, it just means that things like making um, Lena's milk up in the middle of the night is just so much easier than having to 
crouch down and use a bit of a makeshift table. So it's nice, it's good. Now at the minute, alongside that, we're just using our fridge that we've had from uh, when we had our Californias. But what we're gonna eventually have is, this is all gonna be built up and we will have another set of drawers in between here. I also think that's probably where the gas locker is gonna be um, mounted in the bottom of this set of drawers. But um, I'm not sure yet, I've not worked that out yet, or if it's not gonna be there, it's gonna be hidden in the garage somewhere. But it does need to be um, well and truly sealed off from the habitation area, and it also needs to be vented outside as well. So I do need to look into that. Now it's funny, because as we build the van and we progress through each stage, for example, we got the electrics in, and that was a huge milestone. Um, we've now got the kitchen in, another big milestone. It just highlights the next thing that you're desperate to get done and for us the biggest thing that i want to get done now is i want some running water we've got a big water tank at the back um and i just want a tap put in and i want the sink to be usable because at the minute i still have to crouch down outside and use a little uh, folding washing up bowl to do all the washing up. So I think that's the next step uh, to continue this build. And that is actually a step that I looked at ages ago. I do know how we're gonna have the water and we do actually have a lot of the stuff already for that. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through that now. Well, those of you that have been watching for a while will know that I installed the 100 litre freshwater tank a long, long time ago. That's probably, gosh, a year ago now. Um, so that's all put in. It's got the correct holes drilled in it and everything like that. Also underneath there is a, I th can't remember, is it a 70 litre, I think it was, 70 litre wastewater tank as well. Again, got all the correct holes drilled in it, but there is no pipe work connecting anything yet. And that's because I need to work out exactly where I'm going to put uh, all the equipment that's going to give us hot water and pressurised water to the shower sink etc now i researched for ages to decide exactly what system we we're going to use to get hot water in the van there's so many different options there's gas boilers there's diesel boilers there's um yeah there's all sorts you know there's loads of different options and they all come with their pros and cons and we've chosen to use bobble vans um air hybrid boiler and what that means is that gives us so much flexibility loads of different ways that we can get hot water in the van. Now the biggest thing you actually get is the boiler itself. It's a 10 litre uh, boiler and I need to work out where I'm going to place this. This this actually has a bit more flexibility as to where it goes compared to some of the other parts. Now I think the biggest limitation on this really is not where it has to go but just the size of it. So it's not enormous but big enough obviously. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the, the water com comes out the bottom there uh, of the, the tank and then I'm going to have mounted on the side here, I'm probably going to mount a um, shore flow water pump. So that will pump the water out of the, um, the tank and I'm thinking if I can I'm possibly mount in this here, it'll all be enclosed so it's nicely protected. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to mount this here uh, so the water can basically go straight in into the, the bottom here and it will be able to be heated up and then go off to the, the rest of the system. Now one of the options that this can be heated by is 12 volt so I can have a basically just turn the switch on and it will be able to be heated but it obviously draws a lot of power heating all heating elements draw tons of power so there's that option. Now on our Easy Plus system, we actually have a dedicated uh, boiler circuit breaker. And what that means is when this system is plugged into mains, 230 volt, so if we're plugged into a hookup, that will specifically bypass all the 12 volt systems and allow me to run the water heater on 230 volt um, as like a standalone system so that'd be really good that will mean that we can just constantly have hot water available and that'll be powered straight through that so that that's one way of doing it you can obviously do it via 12 volt that we spoke about and then another option is what's inside this box this is actually a heat exchanger so it needs building up i don't think it's fully built up no there's pipes and stuff and fixings and things like that so what this does 
is you have an attachment on one side which will have the output from the diesel heater that we've already installed a while back. Uh, one of the ductings from that will go into here and then uh, there'll be water pipes that will go through this system. And so if you'll run the diesel heater, you can use the hot air from that diesel heater that will go basically through this radiator essentially and um, it will turn the cold water that's going in here uh, into hot water and yeah it will allow us to use hot water from the diesel heater so and again another method of heating uh, which will be perfect when we're off grid be able to power that straight from um, the diesel tank that because when I when I installed the diesel heater I did actually tap into the diesel tank underneath so so, so long as there's diesel in the van we will be able to have uh, the heater and therefore hot water available at all times now this is a bit more specific where this needs to be installed because it needs to be fairly close to the diesel heater the diesel heater is currently underneath the rock and roll bench seat basically I need I think this needs to be closer to the diesel heater than it does to the water tank because it's not quite as essential to be as close to the water tank. It, it really does need to be near the diesel heater. I also need it to be accessible for the, the ducting to be able to get to this. Currently, the diesel heater is underneath this rock and roll bench seat. You can see it just there. I'm going to have to run some ducting underneath here and probably right against this wall because this here is going to be our shower area and toilet. I can't put it underneath because that will raise the floor too high. It'll have to go around the back and I'll have to build a shower, the shower unit to fit around that ducting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the ducting along there. And basically this is just putting a divider, a temporary divider. Um, I'm going to run it through here and I'll probably put that heat exchanger just down here somewhere. That means that the water pipes uh, are not too far away from like the water tank and the uh, boiler and things like that. And I can run the electric cables to it easily. But then it's also not too far that uh, there shouldn't be too much heat loss from the, the diesel heater. I think that's probably the best option rather than trying to fit if i fit the heat exchanger right next to the diesel heater the issue comes when that's the ducting or all taken up by the heat exchanger i need some of the ducting to also heat the van as well so yeah that's going to be a bit more complicated we're going to have to look at that in a bit more detail i think what i will do is i'll have uh the ducting come out here into a t-piece um, so one will go off underneath the shower and into the heat exchanger that will be here. And then another piece will come out and this is going to be all boxed in and there'll be an outlet to heat the actual cabin. I should also mention they've got really good how-to videos as well, showing you the full assembly of like the heat exchanger and, and things like that, all on their, their website and on their YouTube channel. And that, that makes a real big difference, so that's good. Now, has anybody actually treated a bamboo worktop before? Because if so, let us know in the comments below because I want to know the best stuff to use, really. I don't know if to use an oil or a varnish or what. I'm not really sure. I'm also sure that some of you will be wondering what's the gap like between the kitchen and the rock and roll bed. And that was probably one of the biggest worries because it's so easy to, to stand there and measure things and think, I think that's going to be okay, but you never really know until the actual stuff is installed but i can say that it is plenty big enough now if i if i stand absolutely side on and i'm not the slimmest person in the world you can see that i do just about fit there's even a dead tiger fits look but yeah it is it is enough for bentley to fit through and we can easily get to and fro the, the front and the back of the the van so it's good this actually, rock, this rock and roll bed does actually pull out. So when you come to sleep, you can pull it out if you want, if you need a bit of extra space that side. But most of the time it is up against the side and allows us plenty of access 
uh, between the kitchen and the, the seat. Well, that's it for today's video. That's giving you a good update on what we've done in the van recently. Like I say, the, the kitchen is the biggest thing. It's so, so good. To, it, you know, just makes it look like a camp van already. It's fantastic. And a quick insight into how we're going to get hot and cold water up to that sink in the, the kitchen and also to the shower. So quite a lot to do still, obviously. Uh, the water is going to be a big step, a um, bit like the electrics. You know, there's a lot involved with the pipe work and... Um, just making sure there's no leaks that's the scariest thing a water leak can absolutely wreck a van so fingers crossed it will go okay but i'll show you all that in another video until the next video please like if you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing as well we've got plenty more videos to come as you can tell uh, but also we we cover van tours and travels away in our van as well if you haven't seen that previous video as well where we went to the goodwood revival and camped over and watch some incredible racing please check that out that'll be linked in the description below thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video cheers